Uh, around about 50% of patients that present to their doctor before they're diagnosed with cancer may have pain. And certainly in more advanced cancer disease, uh, the prevalence of pain rises to about 75%. At today's uh, session, um, the title is called Emerging Strategies for Cancer Pain Management, and within that uh, we're presenting a range of new uh, methods or approaches to tackling or improving cancer pain management. Although we know that strong painkillers do work in the best hands, um, clearly uh, in routine clinical practice that's not always getting through. Um, and so the research that we're presenting this morning uh, covers uh, uh, patient-based educational interventions, in other words, helping patients uh, manage their medicines better. We're also presenting some research about how to assess pain better, in other words, for clinicians to assess pain better, and that makes a difference to improving pain management. And then finally, some, some new research that looks at the differences that uh, we all have, genetic differences, that may mean that we respond better to certain types of painkiller and not others. Um, and how that is going to influence um, clinical practice is going to be very exciting. Uh, our research has shown that um, cancer pain remains quite prevalent and probably undertreated uh, in the UK and in Europe. Um, and although there are effective means to control cancer pain, uh, they're clearly not being applied uh, that well. And when we looked into this further, we think that some, uh, uh, some of the problems uh, that patients face, since they don't understand their, how to use their drugs, they're fearful of some uh, of the consequences of cancer pain, that gets in the way of good pain control. When we analysed a, a range of studies that tried to tackle these fears uh, and un unfounded fears, we found that on top of the effects of giving drugs, giving that time to explain to patients, reducing their uh, anxiety about the medicines, actually produces additional benefits. In other words, patients get much better pain relief that way. When we measure pain on a 0 to 10 rating scale, the average pain for patients with cancer is around about 5 out of 10. Um, and that's already when they're taking uh, uh, strong painkillers. When we take the time to uh, explain about how to use the painkillers and not to be fearful of some of the medicines, that produces an extra one point benefit so that the pain scores reduce. I think the education uh, interventions work in a variety of ways. Some of them uh, will be addressing uh, fears about what will happen to my cancer pain, will it get worse? And we can usually reassure people that it probably won't. Um, some uh, of the advice we give is very practical advice, such as you know when to take the medicines, uh, how to balance the different sorts of medicines together and so on. Uh, and some are about reducing the, the fear of side effects as well. A lot of patients have unfounded fears about strong painkillers. Um, and by reducing those fears, it allows them to feel more comfortable and to cope better with their medicines and their cancer pain.